The muffled sounds of work came from the shop across the alley, where men and machines made hard metal parts for other machines. He knew enough words to ask for the huge bolt and the nut with steel rods welded fast on either side. The rest he'd make himself out of wood. Now, at last, after the time of work, of uncomplaining plodding on, in fields, on cobbled streets, in the alpine cave where, covered in lice, he shook for days with fever. Now, at last, his hair gone white, he'd make a press. He wanted his own wine. Long days of work in the rich landlord's fields, the graceful bend of the wheat as the wind passed gently through it, the pungent manure, the peaceful drone of bees that never stung, a hat for the sun, the salt taste of sweat, and in his brown satchel, the piece of bread, the piece of cheese, the flask of bitter wine. All this he remembered, and the long climb home at dusk, first the path, the dirt road next, and then the cobbles at the edge of town. Even now, in his old mind, he could feel that last crooked stone, two steps from his door. The harder climb began when Europe cracked. The boots and leggings, the jacket, the great plume in his cap, with that, and the long gun, he marched up the narrow mountain path, eyes fixed on every step. If your fellow slipped, he'd say, you'd watch him fall and disappear. Or if, like me, he felt too sick to move, you went ahead and left him there alone. So came the fever, those days in the cave, the Austrian soldiers, the prison camp. These things he'd say with a smile on his porch across the alley from the metal shop. He'd proposed to his wife in a blunt note, tucked in secret in her closed parasol. Well, yes, she said, you've come back after all, and others haven't. So their life began. With a mouse trap and stale bread, she caught birds and cooked them. She dressed his father's bed sores till the end. Then across the sea they went, to a world unbroken and strange, where one could work and buy a house and grow one's food, where actions mattered more than words. A new world in the making, much in need of men who knew that life was work that rest came last. The noisy town, the bar, the burger joint, the metal shop, its lathes humming all day, had grown around their house, the only one left, the yard all garden, a patch of green, of red and gold, maroon and purple-black. His wife altered the roosters with a pair of rusty pliers. She twisted the heads off rabbits so quickly they hardly bled. She wept as she did these things, and she said one day, as she pulled the skin from an eel with a ripping sound, When I die, do not forget that this is what I had to do. From the kitchen window she watched him tote the huge bolt home and the nut with two rods on either side. On these he'd slide a long pipe to ease his task. Round and round the press he went, 
and down came the current of sweet pink juice, into the basin first, and then the oaken barrels, three of them, enough to last a year, enough to soften all the years of climbing home. Down came the juice, its thin white froth dissolving as it crashed against the basin's edge, like the sea's foam against the rocky firmness of the shore. Thank you.